Good morning. This is Pastor Kevin from the First Baptist Church of Palm Coast. I want to welcome all of you early birds here on Easter morning, sunrise on Resurrection Day. This is the most amazing time uh, on the church calendar uh, that we have as Christians and followers of Jesus Christ. This is the morning, and we'll read the story in just a minute. This is the morning that they realize, they recognize, that they found the tomb to be empty. They went to see Jesus early in the morning. Uh, the story says before dark, they got up and they made their preparations, headed to the tomb. And when they got there, they were wondering what is going to happen. How, who's going to roll the big stone away? Because they had rolled the stone in front of the grave, in front of the tomb, uh, just on Friday night. After Jesus had been crucified, he had uh, died on the cross. They buried him. They wrapped him in uh, a burial cloth. They put him into the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And they rolled a big stone in front of the tomb. And as they did, uh, just you could feel the emotion hanging over the Sabbath. They were heading into the Sabbath, and, and usually on the Sabbath, there was a lot of uh, silence. There was a lot of reflection. But this one, this Sabbath, had to be a different one, for, especially for the followers of Jesus Christ. And so that's why we get up early on Sunday morning, on Resurrection morning, to celebrate, to think about what it would have been like for the for us to discover that we had laid his body there, but now it's not there. The tomb is empty. Oh, man, what a blessed time. We're here at Flagler Beach uh, in Florida. Uh, I don't know where you're joining us uh, in the country or around the globe. You can see it's just a beautiful morning. Uh, the seas are calm. It's not that bad out here. The, it is cloudy and overcast, so I'm not sure that we're actually going to see a sunrise. It should be right here over my right shoulder. And so I don't think we're actually going to see the sunrise, but you can see it getting lighter out. Uh, but don't, have no fear. The sun is still here. Come on, can I get witness? Amen. All right. So, uh, the sun is right above those clouds. And sometimes that's a metaphor for life, isn't it? That when uh, the clouds of life are crowding in and the different things that we're going through seem like an overcast or a shadow over our lives, we know, we know that the sun is above those clouds. The Son of God helps us get through each and every one of those, especially in the season of the coronavirus and all the things that are associated with it. So we welcome you this morning. I don't know where you're joining us from. If you go ahead and, as you're watching, go ahead and type in who's watching with you. Type in where you're from. Uh, where you're watching from, uh, my son, Corey, uh, is, uh, is there. I just got confirmation, confirmation that my son, Corey, and uh, wife, Maddie, we want to say hi to you guys, or wife, Maddie, wife, <laughs> wife, Jesse, my granddaughter, Maddie, now I'm thinking that she may be asleep, not sure if she's still awake. We told her last night when we talked to them in Tokyo that uh, we would love to see them on here. So if you're watching, Maddie, just wanted to say hi. And uh, Waylon also, Waylon is our soon-to-be uh, granddaughter. She'll be uh, coming along uh, next month sometime. And so we are so so uh, looking forward uh, to growing our family. God is good. All the time. All the time, right? God is good. Today I have with me my wonderful wife and production engineer uh, who's running the uh, Facebook Live technology. I also have my brother in Christ, uh, my running buddy, uh, Mr. Bob Wilson. Uh, Bob will tell you the last time that he and I were up for a sunrise service by a body of water, it was at the Sea of Galilee last year. Uh, we had the opportunity to gather and uh, just to spend a few minutes in soft reflection as the sun rose, and it was a clear morning that morning. There was no overcast, and we could see the sun rise, coming, rising up over the Sea of Galilee. What a beautiful sight. This morning is, is a beautiful sight as well. It's gorgeous out here. Light breeze. I do understand that we are getting some rain later, so have no fear. We will be doing our drive-in service. We might have to go to Plan B, but we will be in the parking lot at the church for our drive-through service starting at 10.30 a.m. So I'm going to ask you, welcome you back. Come back and be a part of that. Okay? Well, I'm going to read today the story of uh, Resurrection Morning uh, from John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Now, remember what's happening. Remember uh, the moment in time. Uh, the Sabbath had just ended the night before. The women had gathered the spices to go in to anoint Jesus' body because they had buried him quickly. They put him in a tomb because the Sabbath was approaching. And so as they made their preparations that morning, the thickness, the heaviness, the agony uh, of the things that were going on, the, the feeling of the moment, 
you can just imagine as they're walking toward the tomb and the, the, the heaviness, the grief, the, uh, the, the fear, the worry, what's going to happen next. But before they could do anything else, they had to go and honor and anoint the body of Jesus. And so that's where we pick up the story today as the women are headed to the tomb. And we're focusing in on one of those women. Her name is Mary Magdalene. Reading from chapter 20 of John, the Gospel of John, verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, Sunday, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. What? She couldn't understand what happened. What's going on? They, they were wondering and, and worrying. You read in another gospel, who's going to roll away the stone? And when they get there, they round the corner and in the dud, in the dawn of the morning, they can see that the stone had already been rolled away. And so Mary, she got excited, man. She couldn't understand what's going on. This didn't make sense. And she ran, verse 2, so she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Now I'm wondering if Mary found Simon Peter and the rest of the disciples awake. Remember, it was a daybreak. Were they already awake, or were they sleeping or slumbering to wake up that morning? Remember, they were mourning. They were grieving because the one who meant the most to them had been had been crucified. And so she ran to them and said, made this historic announcement saying the tomb. They, they rolled the stone away. They're taking his body somewhere. That means the tomb was empty. There, there was no body in the tomb. Verse 3 says, And Peter therefore went forth, and the other disciple we know as, as John, and they were going to the tomb. And the two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter, and came to the tomb first. And stopping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings and lying there, but he did not go in. Can you imagine what the Apostle John thinking here? Not believing, bewildered, and, and wondering what was going on, confused, dazed. Uh, what? What's happening? He's looking into the tomb and saying, what? 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 Speechless. Not really being able to utter a sound, just noticing. The linen clothes were there. Jesus was not. Verse 6, Simon Peter therefore also came, following him, and entered into the tomb. And he beheld the linen wrappings lying there. You can almost imagine Peter walking past John into the tomb and picking up the burial clothes, and trying to make sense of what was going on and not really having an explanation, not understanding what's happening. Who took Jesus? Where, where did they take him? What, what's going on? Verse 7, in the face cloth which had been on his head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So even adding more to the confusion, it, it wasn't, the burial clothes were laying there, were kind of maybe disheveled and just kind of lying in a pile, but the head wrapping, the head wrapping as it was lying there, it was separate. And it was as if it was taken off and unwrapped and taken off and lying, put neatly into a pile. Well, this wasn't done in haste. This wasn't, it didn't appear to be done by robbers. Let's put our CSI uh, minds on for a moment. It doesn't make sense. This crime scene doesn't look like much of a crime. It looks like it had purpose and intent to it. And so here Peter is trying to understand what's going on. John's trying to make sense of this. And there's probably not a word passed between them as they're dumbfounded. Verse 8. Says, so the other disciple, John, who had first come to the tomb, entered then also. Here's a, an amazing statement. And he saw, and he believed. Well, what did he believe? What did he believe? Well, he believed that Jesus' body wasn't there. But you see, he believed. And here is the first instance, the first understanding, the first uh, dawning of understanding on this daybreak of the resurrection morning, that what Jesus said was true. He believed that nobody took Jesus' body. Nobody, the robbers didn't come. The, the, the chief priest didn't come. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was resurrected. That he's no longer dead, but he's alive. John believed. And this gives us for first testimony of belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
says that he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples, John and Peter, they went away. They went away. They couldn't make sense of it. That John was, was saying, could it be? Is it possible? I believe it is. Peter scratching his head, probably not understanding, slower to come to belief. Verse 11, Mary Magdalene had run back with the disciples. And Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she went, she, she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw the same thing, the linen clothes, the, the, the burial clothes lying there. Just trying to make sense of it. She was distraught distraught and bewildered in amazement. And as she looked in the tomb, verse 12 says, and she beheld two angels. Huh, where were they at? Where did they come from? And she beheld two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you crying? Why are you so sad? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. She wasn't thinking he was resurrected. She didn't remember. She was too caught up in the emotion of the event. She was like, I, I don't know where they've taken him. I, I came to do a job to, to minister to him, to, to anoint his body, and now I can't find him. She, she, she goes on to say when she had said this, she turned around and... Oh, there was somebody standing there. <laughs> Behold, Jesus was standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. Verse 15, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? The same thing the angels have said. Whom are you seeking? Who are you looking for? Well, supposing him to be the gardener, the caretaker of the, of the graveyard, of the tomb, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've taken him. Tell me where you've laid him. And I will... I will take him away. I'll take care of him for you. Jesus said to her, Mary. Uh, <laughs> I got chills. I got holy goosebumps, man. Glory goosebumps. Jesus said to her, Mary. You remember back in John chapter 10, just a few chapters earlier, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd must lay down his life for his sheep. And he goes on to talk about sheep and the shepherd and how the sheep follow the voice of their shepherd. And so when Jesus said Mary's name, she was his follower. She knew it was him because she recognized the voice of her shepherd. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said, Rabbi. Which means teacher. Well, she did the only thing. She did the same thing you and I would have done. She fell at his feet. She, she began weeping and clinging to him and hugging him and, and trying to... Uh, uh, she couldn't even understand, make sense of this, but here he was. He was dead and now he's alive. And so the only thing that she could do was try to worship him and get to him, get close to him. And so she began to cling to him. She began to hug him. And he said, Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, verse 17. For I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, go to the disciples, and say to them, I will ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Jesus said, go and tell my brother that I'm alive. <laughs> Resurrection morning, the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. Can you hear it? Can you hear the, the music? The band is playing. The steel drums are going. I mean, this is celebration, man. I hope today is a celebration for you because the tomb, let me give you a tip, the tomb is still empty and it's still caused for you and I to celebrate our risen Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. This is what Mary did. You can understand, read it in the different Gospels. John kind of downplays a little bit. Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that He has said these things to her. Now, when it's John says, I have seen the Lord, this is what Mary said. In another Gospel, you can read it. Mary was, she was shouting, hooping and hollering, man. She was not making sense. They looked at her like she was crazy, like there was something wrong with her, because she was so happy, overwhelmed with joy, as she reported these things to them. And they're like, what? Uh, they, just, they couldn't make sense of it. They were like, what is going on? He was dead, and now he's alive? This is exactly the message that Jesus told her to tell. And it's the same message. Can, wait for it. Wait for it. It's the same message that you and I are to share today. That our 
Savior who was crucified on the cross, buried in a tomb for you and I, not for his sins, but for your sins and for my sins, that this Savior who took our place, paid our penalty, has risen from the grave. On the third day when they went to the tomb, the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. And it's still empty because Jesus is alive. Amen. Woo Come on, somebody. If you can't get excited about that, let me tell you, you need to check your pulse. This is an amazing, amazing opportunity for you and I today, as followers of Jesus Christ, for you and I today to tell the world what Easter, what the resurrection morning is all about. That is Jesus, as they went to prepare the body of Jesus. This isn't about bunnies. It's not about candy. It's not about spending time with family. This this holiday, this remembrance today is about one thing and one thing only, and that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, I hope today you're ready to celebrate. I hope today that you're ready to tell everybody that you could possibly tell that Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I want to, again, invite you to come and join us. Join us at the church parking lot, 6050 Palm Coast Parkway. We're going to have a drive-in church service where we're recognizing and we're doing all the things that are socially acceptable, the social distance, but we're going to get together. Now, we're going to have a hooting and hollering and honking celebration today. I hope you're able to come. If you're not, make sure that you tune in at 1030. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship. We're going to, uh, it's going to be an amazing celebration today, and you do not want to miss it. But before we go, I want to pray with you. And I want to pray thanking our Father in Heaven for the gift of salvation and for the what He's given us in our Savior, our Lord, our Master, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Join me in prayer. Father, once again, we uh, what an amazing morning. Father, we thank you every morning that we wake up and we have a new day that dawns, that the opportunities that it presents for us to, to live again, to love again, to remember you again and how good you are to us. But Father, today is a special day. Today is we remember this amazing morning that happened over 2,000 years ago. This amazing morning that as we wake up and we, we understand that as the sun comes up in the morning, so the sun has risen. The Son of God has risen from the grave. The tomb is, is empty and He is no longer there. He is alive. And because of His life, because He is alive, overcoming sin and death, that by Your promise, Lord, that we can also share in that victory over sin and death by placing our faith, our trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, thank you for another remembrance of this amazing celebration of your love, your mercy, uh, and your great power. Father, we love you. We love you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you in a little while.